Howdy, folks. Tex Grebner here with Tex Grebner Outdoors. I hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grebner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness because it's Illinois Archery Season 2019, week number 10. That's right, 10. We are 10 weeks within the slow descent into madness that is the high stakes game of whack a mole and visceral mystery that is Tex Grebner Outdoors, Illinois Archery Season 2019. If you guys want to support the channel in a way beyond simply watching the videos, you can go to TexGrabNearOutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, because by God ain't that the truth, and of course, my personal favorite, the Kill With Stick shirt. If you guys want a discount on all your Trad Life supplies, you can go to ThreeRiversArchery.com, use the code of TexGrabNear in your checkout on stuff like Reflective arrow wraps, trophy burr limb bolts, and of course, you're probably going to be buying from there anyway. And using the code of TexGrabNear in your checkout gives you a shipping discount and shows your support for TexGrabNear Outdoors at the same time. Now, you don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter, but as a hunter, you will never regret being in good shape. And so I strongly encourage you. If you are looking for a reason to start a fitness journey or you need motivation to continue a fitness journey, please check out traintohunt.com, look into their programming, and I hope to see you guys at a Train to Hunt National or a Train to Hunt Regional event one of these days, because you truly don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter, but as a hunter, you will never regret being in good shape. Now, text Grabner Outdoors, we are... 10 weeks into Illinois archery season. And let me just tell you, I don't know. Brand new week, the high stakes game of whack-a-mole goes on. Because I'm really wondering if while I'm over here, if the deer are over there. Now, it's highly unlikely that they're over on the other cattle pasture that my family owns. And I feel like kind of obligated because I've wanted to hunt this patch of timber forever that I need to make the absolute most of it because I don't know if I'm going to have access to it next year. So I play the high stakes game of whack-a-mole in my head trying to predict and figure out where the deer are going to be. So I figured, hell, I got here at 11 o'clock. I can make it till dark. And what I will say is this swan dry stuff is pretty darn awesome. But just about dark, when the rain finally stops, coming up behind me is this little six-point buck, and he's really hugging the cover. And he's basically looking in at me before I even know that he was there. Well, that didn't work out so well, but it is, yet again, proof of concept. Before I left the other night, I had built this blind up a little bit taller. Tall enough that I'd actually have to stand up in order to get an arrow over it, but it would be tall enough to give me excellent concealment and break up my outline, and I built it good and thick. Now, sitting in this blind that I had built, I couldn't help but reflect on Hemingway's Green Hills of Africa, where he describes the exquisite boredom of waiting in a blind, head low, shoulders hunched, and he's waiting on a kudu. Just the exquisite boredom, and it's a very vivid description. Of course, speaking of classical literature... I always thought that White Fang would make a much better short story than it does a novel, because after White Fang gets taken by the natives and turned into a sled dog and a fighting dog, it just goes downhill from there. Now, at the magic hour, as if on cue, I look up, and under the pine tree is this young buck, testing the wind and making his way up the trail. I got my camera into position and I got my bow off the hook. Watching and waiting and hoping 
this just might work. There was only one problem. Right at the magic hour, the wind changed, and there was an older buck with a much bigger rack that was coming up the trail pretty much chasing this younger buck, and they hit my scent cone, and that was the end of it. Now, possibly with a compound bow, I could have sent an arrow clear across the field to get this young buck, but that ain't the way that I do business. And it was just exciting to see a plan almost work out. Now, the truth is, could they have maybe seen me? Maybe. But I think it had more to do with the fact that the wind kind of screwed me. But this is why there has always been and will always be a god of the hunt. Because hunting is a very capricious activity. Well, just practicing here in the backyard with the last of the light. Well, I can't help but wonder if while I've been other places, they've been in here. Also, this is my last hunt before the second shotgun season so if you don't know where to start go back to the beginning so you want survival ingenuity I didn't feel like wearing hip boots tonight because they're so damn cold so we're going to see if trash bags will work. I mean, the worst case scenario is I get cold and wet and I sit for six hours, so it's not like I'm going to die. But we're definitely going to see if this actually works out. Now, in theory... These trash bag hip waders should work as long as I don't end up hitting any sharp rocks and tearing them. So far, so good. Nope, nope. They're at the tail end, I got a tear. So. Huh. That almost worked. But. At the tail end. I got a tear and I got my boots a little wet. So it almost worked. Well, the trash bag waiter idea didn't work. It almost worked, but then it went catastrophically wrong there at the tail end, three feet from the opposite bank. But it was worth a shot. Now, I wasn't too terribly worried about my boots being wet because they were uninsulated leather, so they'd air dry by the time that it actually got cold when the sun started to go down, and I was wearing wool socks on the inside. So it was going to be a long day in this tree. But I also hadn't really had a whole bunch of luck other places this week, so I figured, you know, what the hell. 
might as well go back to the beginning. And this time of year, I have had a buck cruise under me in this tree basically twice last year. So because hunting is a visceral mystery and you really can't predict whitetail, I don't care what people tell you. Deer are going to do what deer are going to do. So I figured, oh, well, it's an absolutely beautiful early December day. I've got nothing to lose. Might as well come sit up in this tree on this side of the creek over on this cattle pasture. But as I was sitting there, I was thinking to myself, with as much damage as the Walt Disney Corporation through Bambi and other media properties have done to modern American hunting and the general worldview of hunting, Disney is a huge anti-hunting advocate in their fiction. But I tell you what, one thing that Disney has done, one thing that Disney has done that can never be denied is the animated Foxy Robin Hood. I tell you what, I believe that the animated Disney's Robin Hood got more young men into archery in my generation than just about anything. So I'm out of the woods right now and it's second shotgun season. So I'm practicing in the backyard and I'm gonna kinda give you a little bit of an update on stuff. So first of all, Still using Wells Lamont Thinsulate gloves. Thinsulate liner, you're going to want to make sure that you have two pair of them. That way you've got the ability to, if they get wet, take them off, put on the dry pair. And also, even though I've basically given up on synthetic clothing, and high-speed hunting clothing in favor of stuff like Big Bill pants and Swan Dry wool. I will say that the incinerator muff from Sitka is probably about the best thing that they make that is actually worth the money because you're going to pay about a hundred bucks for it but versus spending all that money up front or you figure that you spend $200 over a deer season on hot hands for a plushy like $15 muff, I would definitely say that an incinerator muff is worth it. Now, I really like these swan dry wool shirts. And I am not a fan of lofted insulation because loft, on your sleeve is your enemy as a traditional bow hunter. Now what I will say is we haven't had any super extreme conditions yet this year. But that doesn't mean that they're not coming. Now to tell you the truth, it doesn't really bother me that I'm shooting a little bit low because it definitely seems like a white tail will duck you almost every time. And it still burns me up and makes me very ashamed that I lost that deer the other day. There's definitely a forlornness to the season at this point because there's been a gun season. There will be another gun season that's going on right now. Most of the crops are out now, or a lot of the crops are out now. And the rut, the first rut, is basically over and so now we're getting into the winter season but there is this wanderlust and just this fascination of maybe it'll work you've got to be able to convince yourself to live on dreams when your better judgment says oh hell there's no way 
why am I bothering to go out? And the answer is, is because if you don't go out, miracles can't happen. Like that buck the other morning. I never thought in a million years that I'd get a six yard shot on a bedded deer. So even though there's like a forlornness to the season at this point, it's like, you really, you just don't know. There's no way of knowing what's gonna go down. And just that wonder and that majestic doubt is part of the attraction, I guess. Also, it's only probably going to get colder from here, which is why I'm really putting effort into making sure that I practice with the gloves on. Oh, you might also note that I've got skateboard tape. That way I get a good grip. Now people say, Oh, you shouldn't grip your bow. Well, I'm a fan of the fact that you're going to forget everything you know or think you know or think you knew when a deer is there. So you might as well tune and practice with a death grip on your bow. Because when something walks out in front of you or you got one six yards in front of you like how I shot that buck, you're going to death grip your bow. I don't care what you think you're going to do. You're going to death grip it. So you might as well practice and tune around a form that is conducive to how you will realistically behave in the situation. So the first step in my shot process is grip the bow. The second step is draw the bow. The third step is focus on what I want to hit. And the fourth step is hit the anchor. The fifth step is make sure stuff looks right. And then let the arrow fly. There's still plenty of season left, but it is a little bit depressing when you get on the wrong side of Thanksgiving. And it gets even worse when you get on the wrong side of Christmas. But, got to make sure you practice in your winter gear. At this point, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I've got a pretty good idea, but hunting is a visceral mystery. I bring you the reality of the Illinois archery season. These deer are wild and free, majestic creatures. And they get to do what they want, when they want. That's just the way that it is. I don't have a production level where I actually get to influence the natural world or make this look any cooler than what it actually is. So at this point, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I've still got some season yet before it's time to start planning for next year. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode of Tech Grabbing Your Outdoors Illinois Archery Season 2019. As far as I'm concerned, the whitetail curse is still in effect. Wiley Coyote is still my spirit animal, but here's hoping pretty soon that I kill with sticks. As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please become our friends or at threeriversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those who have been involved in law enforcement and those who serve in the military. And thanks for watching. Text grabbing your outdoors.